Yeah, today it shows up, um, and uh, you uh, can buy the servers from your favorite vendor. So we're yeah. not reselling servers. Uh, you're able to, to go to IBM, HP, and sure. others to get the get the servers. Yeah. And then, uh, someone from Nebula shows up, um, plugs it in. Yeah. Up and running in about an hour. So Good. It's, well, it's completely Nebula. It's a Nebula device. Uh, we have not used any custom ASICs yeah. uh, in the device, so it's using um, a uh, layer two switch fabric. Um, we've actually uh, partnered with Arista on that piece. Uh, yeah. and it's using uh, x86 and other another kind of uh, components that have been built from the ground up to to be a cloud controller. So it's, it's got everything you need to turn a rack of servers into the into the sure. AMD based device. Okay. Uh, it has 50 10 gigabit Ethernet ports on it. It has um, all the compute and storage capacity uh, needed to power that rack of servers and also yeah. aggregate all of the control plane and all of the, the messages uh, that occur uh, from the devices in that rack and present it back up to it. And then the core uh, software that's sitting on there, uh, on the bare metal, uh, at the operating system layer, is it your own flavor of Linux, yeah, we, something we call else? Yeah, whole um, operating environment, uh, Cosmos. So it's it's uh, based on the Folsom release of OpenStack, which sure. backports of uh, all the uh, relevant security and yeah. stability uh, patches uh, backported from Grizzly. Sure. So it's, it's a very uh, very current uh, release, and, it's, and it is a non-forked uh, OpenStack core. I mean, think of Cosmos as the entire collection of um, technologies that okay. makes the cloud work. Um, okay. And it's basically a hundred different uh, kernels and open source technologies and, ev and everything kind of designed to operate as a, sing a single system. Right. Now, when you buy the cloud controller, um, what you get is a uh, reliable set of cloud services out of the hardware you plug into it. Is heat your orchestration layer? I'm assuming not. I'm assuming you have something else. Well, heat's not quite ready yet. Sure. Um, so um, we are actually working very closely with the folks on that. What Nebula provides is your uh, basic infrastructure services. So it's um, an EC2 and OpenStack compatible compute service. It's your object store, um, which uh, provides 100% API compatibility with uh, with Swift. Uh, and uh, in our next release, S3, it's uh, Elastic Networking. So and it's, and it's uh, block storage as well. So you, you need no third-party hardware or software to, yeah. to make this a uh, fully Amazon and OpenStack compatible uh, turnkey cloud. And when we talk Amazon compatibility, because I know the API has been built into OpenStack for some time. Yeah. Um, where does that come into play when you're talking to end users, customers, prospects? Is it a question yeah. of portable workloads, burstability, or something else? It's all the above. I mean, I, I think a lot of folks have experience with uh, with Amazon. They have existing tools, sure. um, and there is existing uh, there's a lot of existing uh, products in that ecosystem. Yeah. So being compatible with with the Amazon APIs um, makes it easier for folks to, to cross leverage or to, to migrate uh, workloads from Amazon to Nebula. From the initial round of customers that you have in this yeah. early stage, um, is it a specific market vertical or, or a specific uh, use case? It's, 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 a, it's a few. Um, we've, we've talked a lot about a few of the, the customers. You can go to our website and see some of the statements sure. and everything. But um, what we're finding is wherever there's an overlap of um, you know, an enterprise that has uh, the kinds of concerns that enterprises have, they might compete with some of the cloud service providers, uh, they want to uh, have control over the security and the privacy characteristics of the system. Yep. Uh, they have huge amounts of data, and they, they can't literally move it from their on-prem infrastructure out to a public cloud provider and sure. back uh, because of the, just the massive quantities of data. And it, it's, it's when these things kind of overlap that we have a real sweet spot. So a few examples are biotech. Um, yep. Some of our customers are um, dealing with large data sets because of the next-gen gene sequencers that are um, becoming increasingly yeah. uh, affordable. Uh, and so we've got uh, huge amounts of data that traditional pharma, pharma, biopharma companies really just don't sure. have the tools to deal with. And then the standard uh, claim in the media always is that people are afraid of the cloud because of security, just to argue devil's advocate. Yeah. I know, and you know better than I do, in Grizzly there was this... Uh, no DB uh, piece that got pulled out of Nova, which some people think it's a bigger deal than others. Is that something that um, A is a security concern, and then B, how do you backport something like that when it's so integral to the infrastructure of Nova itself? Well, I mean, it, you know, security is one of those things that um, there's not there's not a magic thing you do to make a system this complex secure. Sure, um, you end up having to do. 
um, hundreds of different things um, with a philosophy in mind. So when Nebula built the system, for example, we, we literally built the whole thing from the ground up. Every every chip, every piece of hardware yeah. in the system is built with security in mind from the ground up. So the architecture of the system yeah. was designed um, from the ground up to be secure. So, um, but your, your work is never done, right? So security is all about um, just making it possible to upgrade the system sure. to the latest patches and the latest. And, and so it's, it's security is an ongoing concern for clouds, and it's, it's the why it's why we need to make clouds um, easy to manage and easy to operate.